All right, and with us right now, we've got Eric Cabral. Eric, you are the founder and chief creative officer of On Air Brands, and you are the founder of PodMax. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, absolute pleasure and honor to be on your show, Josh. Thank you so much. So, uh, Eric, how did you get into uh, media? Particularly, obviously, you guys do a lot of work with podcasts, but you do live streaming and a lot of that, a lot of that kind of work. And you've built up a really strong and successful agency. So, first off, congratulations for that. Uh, but secondly, I'm, I'm curious, like, what led you into this area? Yeah, so I was in the creative industry and am in the creative industry, but for over 20 years, I was in corporate America. And, you know, I learned a ton and uh, got into systems and processes um, sort of later in my careers in terms of getting to that level of a creative director and managing teams and, and budgets. And when I got to that point, uh, I started to understand the business aspect of it better. And um, I got laid off for the second time and I realized I wanted to take my future in my own hands. So I started to jump into real estate investing and that's what led me down the road to sort of build businesses and systems and tech and, and teams and as I was in that industry and buying properties and, and, and managing properties um, I considered myself retired from creative and uh, but as the universe has it um, they it beckoned me and it called me back to help the community to help the real estate investors in their in their creative endeavors and they didn't understand social media marketing. They didn't understand anything about how it all worked. So because I was leading by example and creating my own brands, I started to develop more and more relationships and clients and it built on air brands um, to, you know, first one client turned into three, turned into six, turned into dozens. So um, it's funny because how it all works out is I, I really, see myself as the guinea pig in mm -hmm. terms of products and services. So I always sort of test drive things on my own and for us, and then people notice it and recognize and love it. And then they ask us, how can you do this for us? And then we go, well, okay, I, I'm passionate about this product, uh, whether it's a podcast or, or, or you know, a, a brand or a logo. We say, we're doing it for us. And if you love what we're doing for ourselves, we could definitely package this up and create something for you. So that's really how it all started. So kind of the three areas I see you guys do a lot of work with, with on-air brands, obviously, so podcasts, live streaming, and then social. And so there's a lot of great things that we could be doing uh, in each of those areas. Um, so if there is a, um, you know, a company that's producing a lot of content, why should they invest in um, working in the podcasting space, and, and what re what activity would you recommend if they like if they just say well, I want to get into podcasting? Yeah, yeah. I, well, the first question we always ask is why. What's your ultimate goal? What do you What are you trying to? What value are you trying to add to other people's lives or businesses? And if they don't really give us a succinct or great answer for that, then I'm going to ask again. Well, why do you really want to do this? And if they right. say something like, well, it's because everybody's doing it. Well, that's not mm -hmm. the right answer. And you probably will not last <laughs> in the podcasting space. So first, that's that's what we want to establish. Do you have a strong enough why and, and reason why to do a podcast and create one? Because it's work and it's time and it's effort and energy. So I wanted to put that up front for anyone who's thinking about it, because you're going to have to invest a lot of time and energy if you don't have teams and systems and processes in place to help you develop those because what i also try to highlight to people is a podcast will if you do it right turn into a business so you have to look at it as such before it even exists and take it seriously like a business even if a lot of people are saying oh it's going to be my side thing i'm going to mm -hmm. do it the weekend absolutely go for it you know spread your message and and and, and your audience will find you but <laughs> tried and true will become a business because it's a it's not a one and done thing it's a weekly it's a daily it's something that's always happening and you're going to have to create a machine and an engine behind it so i know you had another question in there well i think with podcasting specifically my suspicion is that a lot of clients are saying well ultimately we need to drive sales with it so you know can we build an audience just because we have a podcast and how can we monetize that work I'll do, you know, I think a lot of people are like, listen, I'll do anything as long as there's a, a solid business plan behind it and a good return on investment. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, it's funny because the the ROI, the return on investment there, it's it's difficult to quantify when it comes to podcasting, unless you're on like corporate level or you're a large, you know, you're Joe Rogan or Tim Ferriss, where you can look at the numbers, you can spend the ads uh, or, or have people uh, buy ad space or sponsorships on your show. But when you're small potatoes or you're you're starting out like like a lot of us are. Um, I think the power, Josh, and you, I'm sure can attest to this because we've spoken offline about it, is the power of the relationships that you can build through podcasting because you have a one-on-one, -on -one, you have an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one intimate conversation with someone long form. And when that happens, yeah. when you make that connection, you know, and, and this happens so magically through podcasting, especially if you're in the same room. Or if you have some some boss ass cameras like you do, where you, <laughs> I, I can see the pores on your face. Like it seems like we're in person. That's a connection that you can't replicate, and that eventually converts into clients, into partnerships, into relationships. Yeah. So the podcast I try to highlight to our clients and friends and partners that look to it as that it's going to build relationships. Yeah, for sure. And so what have you seen with live streaming in terms of trends? And is this something that might be worth somebody's time? And if so, um, what what should they do? Is it is it enough to just say, well, we got this Facebook page. It, it says li there's a live button here. I guess we start here. I mean, I mean, what, what works in live streaming today? Yeah, so we've always been twist, uh, testing and tweaking the models. So, you know, we, we try things um, as far as live streaming through software. You know, there's a software we used to use called OBS, and um, it would take the live uh, experience to the next level in terms of not just being a phone. And, you know, that is what is expected when people watch your content live. Um, but if you could take it to the next level to stand out and diver differentiate yourself from the crowd, I would highly recommend trying to figure out software and tools and cameras and microphones that stand out so people see, oh, this is this quality is different. This is better than most people. I mean, I don't want it to be the barrier, you know, for you to create content and to go live. Absolutely. If it's easier to pick up your phone and go live, do it, um, especially if you have something of value to add. But if you want to take it to the next level like we're doing invest in a little bit of equipment so that you can start to differentiate differentiate yourself from the crowd yeah um and if someone's going to get into this uh how important is it for them to be consistent and, and to do it often so that's how we leverage uh live streams uh we have a show every wednesday live at 11 like clockwork and People will often ask, how do you do that? How do you stay consistent? Well, here's here's something we figured out. We have multiple hosts. So if one of us can't be here, the odds are someone's gonna be here. So when we're all here, it's great because there's the banter, there's the, uh, the chemistry of the group. Um, but if you can be consistent, create a show that you know, hey, I'm gonna commit to this day, this time, each and every single week and go live, Facebook, YouTube, all of these platforms will love you for it because they'll see consistency. Those, the algorithms will favor you and push you up. And then what will also happen is people will see it because Facebook is, is sharing and helping you to promote it. And then there's more engagement and there's more comments and there's more love and people starting to participate in what you're doing. And it's just magic. But the thing is, Josh, you have to be consistent and you have to be true and trust the process because it takes time. We're, yeah. we're in our show for almost a year now, and now we're finally getting thousands of views per show. But th at the beginning, you could literally watch our first show on your brand <laughs> live on Facebook, where we're, my, mar my partner at the time was saying, what? there's three people watching, who cares? Yeah. But, but now we have thousands. So look, mm. just keep and trust the process and it'll work. It can be pretty disheartening when, when you do it and you're like, well, again, only three people watched this. Yeah. But there's nowhere, you know, it, one exercise you can do if you want to feel good about yourself, you're a content producer, is go back and watch or listen to the first episodes of, of any big rock stars podcast or live stream or whatever it is that they create, they're well known for. Chances are the quality was really bad. Absolutely. And and secondly, I mean, they were pretty bad. Uh, they probably had really, really, you see this all the time with like YouTubers, you go back to their early, early stuff and like, you know, it has a couple dozen views on it, probably from people that are morbidly curious like you who went back and looked at it, but <laughs> they kept at it. You know, we have one client in particular, you know, now he gets consistently, you know, within an hour, 
you know, he'll get 50 to 100,000 views on his video when it goes live. But man, when he started, like all his earlier videos, not one of them has more than a thousand views on it. Yeah. And so I appreciate you kind of, you know, cheering people on like, no, 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 keep going, keep doing it. You're going to be okay. You just got to get over that hump. Exactly, exactly. And trust that it will work as long as you stay true to it and keep it going and, and, and treat it like, you know, unfortunately, like, sort of like a job, but it's a job that you own. You know, you own that show and, and people will love you for it and they'll come because especially if it's an interview format, people want to be a part of it. You know, you're, you're sort of helping to elevate them and what they're doing. So yeah, it's a win-win yeah. for everyone. Uh, so Eric, where does On Air Brands, like specifically what do you do and where do you, where have you grown your clients from? Yeah, so we did not anticipate the explosion of podcasts. So we were doing them for ourselves and, and just loving it as a marketing tool and a way to connect with people and then as that started to grow as a production house, you know, so we develop and create over half a dozen podcasts in house and for our clients and we have over a dozen podcasts within our network. Um, as, as, as time grew and, and the industry started to really dictate where we need to go, we were really doubling, tripling down on podcasting and also we're doing it through podcasting events. So. Yeah. I had mentioned and you had mentioned pod max is mm -hmm. becoming this this animal of its own that's growing and we need to keep feeding it because it's a unique experience for entrepreneurs to come in one day into our studios we have eight studios all running simultaneously wow. and all these podcasters top rated podcasts sitting there waiting for you to sit down and have a conversation and then now you get to spread your message through larger communities, through their tribe. And, and then the magic happens when the mics turn off because now all of a sudden you're connecting with that podcaster and you're trying to figure out how you can help them and do business. And then you step outside during the breaks, there's all these entrepreneurs that are doing the same thing you're doing. And now you're connecting with them and figuring out how to partner and how we can create things together. So it's this magical, unique experience that uh, is unlike anything we've seen. And we're really proud that we have created this thing. Yeah, PodMax is really exploding right now, so. That's great, that's great. You know, there's such a power to being, you know, connecting either as a host or a guest on any kind of platform, whatever it is. If it's, you know, doing a live stream together. Uh, I remember, remember when Blab was a thing, right? And, uh, but now there's just so many others uh, that, that you can use, but you know, it, it doesn't take a whole lot. And so I can see the value of putting together an event like PodMax was like, listen, you can bust out like eight podcast interviews in a day and think about the power of that. I mean, there really is power to networking. And just for a moment, Eric, uh, you know, kind of contrast that to a thing, uh, you know, to, I think maybe historically, um, you know, people have been really, really excited about automating marketing and, you know, just fun funnels that are just systematized and they're impersonal and they're cold and you're just going to trick people into tripwires and you know and uh opt-ins and all this other stuff that to me like i i recognize that that has a place but man it's a completely different vibe and i recognize that not every business can do what we're talking about but i gotta tell you living you know this this approach to just investing in relationships man it is just such a joy yeah. it is such a joy to just network connect with people serve them do good and and see where relationships go yeah a hundred percent absolutely a thousand percent i agree with you you know we've dabbled in that you know the back-end marketing you know the, the the facebook ads you know ads manager and doing all of that stuff and like you said you know it, to me it's not fun you know looking at the zeros and ones and trying to figure out you know that's that's left to someone who's very left brain analytical. For me, I'm a creative as I as imagine you are. And yes, there are tried and true strategies behind that, that work and the numbers work. But um, in the end, like you said, it's relationship based. I love organic growth. I love uh, having conversations with people over the phone or like this, and then really talking about genuinely caring and figuring out how we can serve and help you. Yeah. Um, so Eric, uh, do you have a PodMax event coming up? We do actually. So 
You know, I know this is evergreen, so uh, look on our website, podmax.co, for the next date. But the current one that's coming is February 28th. Mm -hmm. So that is a week from today. Uh, it's 2020. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so it was, it was a couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really exciting because, um, yeah, we're, we're trying to roll them out, honestly, Josh, every month just because of the demand. Wow. They sell out within days, and we're like, wow, how can we do this more? So we're trying to take it from a uh, from a it was like a quarterly uh, schedule now to a monthly and then nationally. So yeah. we're trying to well, do it methodically and slowly so we don't trip over ourselves. Yeah. Well, listen. I mean, as a podcaster, I am always looking for guests, and as long as they meet our threshold, I mean, they've got a thriving business, they're doing six figures a year or more. Uh, then I just I want to share that story. I mean, that's that's what that's what I do, and. Um, it's, I tell you, it's, I, I just feel like there's this renaissance in marketing for people are rehumanizing it. Uh, and, and that excites me. Um, and I know that again, Eric, that's a big part of your whole business model. That's how you've been able to grow so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I love the word renaissance too, because, um, you know, there was something here, uh, podcasting is not new. Um, but yeah, there's a resurgence and, 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 and the love for it now that people are starting to recognize. But you and I as podcasters that understand the platform and how powerful it is, have to really help people to know that, hey, if you're really interested in doing this, um, you've got to take it seriously. Um, and, and not to the point where you you know it's analysis by paralysis, but um, know that there, it's powerful. And if you do it right and you leverage it correctly, it's going to work for you. But surround yourself with people. Surround yourself with people like Josh and people who, who understand the process and can set up and show you the blueprint so it's setting you up for success. Very, very cool. So uh, Eric, if someone were to want to kind of dive into your world, uh, what are some great first places that people could go? Your podcast, you know, per certainly, you know, let's share that and uh, let people know how they start engaging with the work that you're doing, uh, both with PodMax and On Air Brands. Yeah, absolutely. So podmax.co, if you go to that website, you can see a button at the top that says apply as a guest. So if you apply as a guest, you'll have the opportunity to be like Josh said on four or five episodes all recorded in one day. On, and, and it's an amazing event that really you'll, you'll walk away truly happy. And then uh, there's another button that says apply as a, a host. So then you could be a podcast host. And I'm hoping that we'll have Josh come in too soon where, you know, you'll walk into the room and see Josh's uh, handsome face smiling at you, but you have to apply so that we get all of your information and the system and the team knows that you want to be a host rather than a guest. But yeah, check out our website at podcast.co. Or if you want to look into our production aspect of, of podcast, yeah, check out onairbrands.com. We have contact forms to fill out there as well. But um, our shows too, I have Entrepreneur Circle. That's my show that I love to interview folks. So reach out to me in terms of if you want to be a guest on Entrepreneur Circle or my other show, Capital Hacking, which is 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 really blowing up. We had Robert Kiyosaki on not long ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really, really a wonderful show with my co-host, Josh McAllen. How do you get uh, How do you get a Robert Kiyosaki to show up? You have to be around him. So we figured out what networks he's a part of. We happened to be a part of one of his networks and he was there during a cruise and ah. we had extensive time with him. So he got to know, like, and trust us for a little bit and said, yeah, I'll do your show. And he endorsed it actually. So if wow. you listen to the shows, you hear, this is Robert Kiyosaki and you're listening to Capital Hacking with Josh and Eric. Yeah, it's really cool. I, I honestly shed a tear when, when I heard his voice promoting my brands. I was like, yeah, oh, no kidding. Crap. That guy's was, I would imagine that Robert Kiyosaki was pretty instrumental to you at some point, right? Absolutely. As a real <laughs> yeah. investor and just as an entrepreneur, he really yep. just, he's the, the purple pill, I say, because his, yep. his brand yeah, went down That's the road. quadrant, man. When I read that one, that was like, yeah, I mean, I, th I feel like I already had like the rich dad principles down. But then when I started looking at, yeah, you just got to get to all about leverage. And, um, you know, that's where it really clicked for me. I was like, that's incredible. So yeah, yeah, that'll change your life. Yeah. Eric Cabral, you are the founder and chief creative officer of On Air Brands and the founder of PodMax on the web at podmax.co. On Air Brands is at onairbrands.com. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Josh. 